Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to conduct basic item analysis for a data set in SPSS and Microsoft Excel. First, I will show you how to conduct basic item analysis uh, using a data set called Case Study 1 in SPSS version 22. Next, I will also show you how to select the most important output from SPSS because not everything in SPSS should be reported. So we have to select the most relevant one. <clears throat> Using the same data set case study one, I will also I will transform that data set into Excel file and try to conduct the same analysis in SPSS using Excel, since some of you are more familiar with Excel or more comfortable with Excel or have Excel in your device instead of SPSS. And last, I will use the two results from SPSS and Microsoft Excel and try to compare with to see whether they are similar or not. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> Case study one. This is the scenario. A researcher has developed an instrument to measure social anxiety. This measure is called the Social Anxiety Scale, or in short, SAS. The SAS consists of 20 items, each having four score levels, coded as 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, to evaluate the properties of the SAS, the researcher administered it to 500 respondents. Okay, and the data from the respondents is in the SPSS data file called case study one underscore data dot SAV. Dot SAV is the extension of SPSS file. And um, <clears throat> so basically in order to open this file, you have to have SPSS in your computer or laptop. In this file, the 20 items are labeled V1, V2, and so on up to V20 because we have 20 items. Um, more information for you, there are no missing responses, so each respondent has a response to each of the 20 items. So what should we do first when we have a data file is to conduct a scan of the data to make, to make sure that all information is okay. In order to do this, we have to run a descriptive statistics analysis in SPSS. I will, I will demonstrate all of this in SPSS, but I will also provide here, I also provide here the, the written step-by-step uh, -step instruction on how to do that in case you, want, you need to refer back. Okay, so let's go to SPSS. Here I have my SPSS has opened, the data set, the data file is already open, and we can see here it's it's called case study one underscore data dot SAV. And like I mentioned, it, um, it is a social anxiety scale with zero, one, two, three score category. And we can see here we have some zeros, ones, twos, and even threes. And we have 20 items supposedly. To be able to see our variable, we can see we can go to variable view and see, okay, these are the variable variables that we have. And we have 20 items here, V1 up to 20, and it's in numeric scale. <clears throat> and we have also one uh, variable for person ID. And it's also numeric, and it has a decimal point. I think basically person ID is just to show that we have 500 people in our data set. And let's just scroll all the way down, although we can check it. You know, you know, using descriptive statistic later. So we have 500 people basically responding to 20 items. And since it's just a people, we don't really need decimal point for people. So let's just change it to non-decimal. Voila. So we have now person ID without decimal points. OK. First and foremost, like we said earlier, we have to scan to make sure everything looks OK. So to do that, we go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, oops, Descriptives, click it, and again we have our variables. Oh, the 20 item is in nominal. 
let's just change it make sure everything in the scale measure okay analyze go back to analyze descriptive descriptives and again okay now 20 320 is now a scale we can select everything except the person ID I'm just hitting the control here on my laptop and select all and yep everything selected I move it to variables uh, column here I mean the window so basically if you're doing this you basically get the mean the standard deviation the minimum values maximum values so here everything is checked mean standard deviation minimum maximum so basically I don't need to check on anything else because I just need all these four at least for now so we had continue I just show this for the sake of showing you and to, to know that what options you have and we click OK the output window pops out and there you go we got our descriptive statistics hmm so far we have 500 respondents 20 items hmm yep minimum score value is zero maximum is three and the mean here differs based on how the respondent answered and the standard deviation of the mean I mean of the score okay everything looks good no missing data let's go back to our PowerPoint there you go so based on this output, <laughs> that output, does everything look okay with respect to any error in data entry? Means are there any values that fall outside of the acceptable range of zero to three? Are there any ex like maximum values of four? And we saw earlier, we don't have anything falls over three, make a score of three. So and then it says like, what is the minimum and maximum value of the observed score, uh, observed scale assigned to the anxiety continuum, as defined by the SES? Basically, just ask. Yes. Here you go. We have the um, output here again uh, in my slide here. I include it here. So basically, <laughs> everything looks good. Zero to three. Nothing is less. Everybody's answered the 20 items good okay let's move on oh by the way here um, just um, preview for next uh, following class for the following class is like on our item analysis the mean represents the item difficulty of each item here and we will see how to actually analyze um, this the values okay then so we look at our data it was fine everything's falling in the range within the range of minimum and maximum and we have the mean and standard deviation and now we would like to compute the total score because in, earlier we have like individual items now we need to compute the observed summated SAS score SAS score for each individual to do this we're going to use the sum function in SPSS and we can you know we have to rename this and basically we have to go to this we have to do this step by step and then we will examine the distribution of the SAS score for a sample of 500 people by creating a histogram in SPSS okay let's go back to our SPSS file there you go so now everything looks good now we have to come up with a sum score now we have individual score we want to know the total score of each person how much how many how much how I'm sorry <laughs> how much how many score <laughs> did the person um, you know achieve that each person achieve so in order to do that we'll just go to transform and we compute a variable because basically we don't have total score yet like uh, earlier the slide says you know we should name it as SAS score 
So we name it as SES core, and we use we're going to use a function group to calculate it. We can actually calculate it, you know, like manually, v1 plus v2 and so on until v20. But you know, it seems like a little bit tedious. So we we can use function group. We go to statistical, and here we have special variables. We can ask it to come out with sum. This is basically like in Excel. Okay, how is gonna, how are we gonna do this? So we're gonna put v1, comma, and then the next variable we want v2. It's still tedious, but it's not as bad. <laughs> now I'm clicking comma using my keyboard. V3, v4, v5, v6, v7, v8, v9, v10, v11, v12, v13. Okay, there you go. Everything's there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so hit OK. Basically, the output just show that, okay, SPSS just compute SAS core, and this is the syntax. And let's go see whether we have data. Okay, now we have SAS core in our data for all 500 people. Yep, and then we are about we are about to conduct based on this. Okay, sorry, based on this SAS score, we are going to see the distribution of the 500 people respondents. How the score got distributed on the continuum. So in order to do that, we can go to <clears throat> Analyze, and then we can go to Descriptive Statistics again. And But this time, instead of going to Descriptives, we're going to Frequencies. And then this time, we are interested in the SAS score, means everything, the total of the 20 items. And then we want to see how each person got, uh, you know, got distributed. So we move to assess core to the variables, and we select charts. Here we have bar charts, pie charts, histograms. We learned in class that you know, these pie charts and pie charts are actually more suitable or appropriate for dichotomous or categorical variable. Now, but histograms is appropriate for a distribution. So we have here, I'm going to show normal curve on histogram, and then we're going to hit continue, and then OK. It's coming up. OK, histogram. There you go, because I asked for the normal curve for the distribution. This is the distribution of my 500 respondents. You can see here the mean. Usually people, you know, people on average, people, the, my respondents scored 30. Standard deviation is 10. Okay. And this is the frequency. You know. And yeah, you can see here, the SAS score, observed score, is actually ranged from 0 to 60 because we have 0 and, um, I mean, 0 as the minimum and 3 score is a maximum score and we have total of 20 items. Okay, let's go back to SPSS, I mean, to our slides here. And then there you go. This is the SAS score, the one that we just computed for actually 500 people. This is actually, I cut the thing so that I can display everything on the screen. And yep, there you go. We did this earlier. 
and again observe score range ranges from 0 to 60 because we have 20 items times 3 maximum score and therefore we have scores that ranges from 0 to 60. I'm going to continue